The next part of this is creating the blend that wraps around from the step surface down to this main slab. And you'll also notice that this blend eventually is going to fade out into these adjoining surfaces. So the way we go about doing that is we're going to bring back this offset. This offset was originally used to create this seam here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and create a couple of offsets. I'm going to offset this up, we'll say one millimeter, and we'll preview so that goes up in that direction. I'm just going to say both sides and select OK. Now what this gives me are the two surfaces that I'm going to use to create some intersections on these elements. Now these intersections that I'm going to create are going to be my tangent curves for my blends. The reason why I want to use these curves is because, again, they match the actual profile of the top. They match the profile of the main driving slab for the center console. The way I go, go about doing this is you'll see here, this is a split. So I'm going to go to Parent Children, and I'm going to hide show the original surface. There's my blend. I'm going to intersect that blend with that slab. This here is a multi-section surface, so I'm going to go ahead and do the same. I'm going to intersect, because that's the base element in that area. So the next thing I'm going to do is, let me go ahead and take and swap visible space. I have a curve here at this end. I'm going to hide show that. I'm also going to hide show this curve, as well as uh, this one right here. Now I'm going to do a couple of more intersections. I'm going to intersect this, again, surface with this curve and select OK. Now that I have that point, what this allows me to do is create a curve from here to here on down eventually. So I'm going to go ahead and hide show this. And I'm going to do the same basic steps with this surface to these other slabs. So I'm going to parent children once again. I'm going to take offset one. I'm going to do my intersect this offset one. And next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do parent children, fill it one. There it is in the tree. I have it selected. I'm just going to simply intersect that with that. And let me show fillet one because I'm going to eventually need that as well. Now that I have those in, I can hide this. What I need to do is create my slab. So the first slab I'm going to generate is my blend. This blend is going to run from this curve. And remember, that curve sits on this surface. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to this curve, and that curve sits on this surface. This is the original base element. Remember, I want to go to that base element and select OK. Now that I have that done, I'm going to double click on this. Actually, let me go ahead and hide this offset. I'm going to double click on this split, and there's my offset 2. I no longer want it to be the offset 2. I'm just going to simply replace and say I want it to be split to there and say other side. Now I have the same condition here where I have uh, my blend. This is blend 3. That's the initial base element. So I'm just going to hide that for now. I'm going to double click on this. And in this case, what I want to do is I want to add this in as part of my split. Select OK. As you can see, there's my blend. It wraps up around. Because it's tied to the original base elements, it's very stable. Now the next thing I need to do is I need to create a curve here to wrap this around on. And that curve can be either a spline imposing tangency on both sides. You can use a line on that 
on that surface, whatever it is you want. So I want to go from, now you'll notice here that I'm picking a vertex. I really don't like picking vertices because they're the most unstable of elements. So I'm just going to go to parent children, hide show this offset, and I'm going to do an intersection. There's my offset 4 to that boundary. Select OK. Go ahead and hide offset 4. Now I've got that element there. So what this allows me to do is let me go ahead and hide this. I can create my spline from this point here going up to this point here. Oops, go in the correct direction. Geometry on support. There's my support. If you want to, you can make it tangent, curvature, whatever suits your needs in this corner. And select OK. Now that I have that curve in, I can create my multi-section surface. I'm going to go from this intersection to that fillet, this intersection to this multi-section surface. Guide curves. First guide is this curve, tangency surface. And then second is this curve. And I don't want to go to the tangency surface over here of this split, so I'm just going to go into Parent Children. I'm going to show that sweep. Select OK. I created that multi-section surface. It's in there. Let me go ahead and hide that element and double-click on my multi-section surface. Let me reverse that direction. And for this boundary, I want to impose that surface. Select OK. Hide Show. And now to clean this up a little bit, I'm going to go ahead and double click on this split. For this, I'm going to replace that with this curve, say on the side, because remember I had that curve up here that I originally split it to. And then I'm just going to go in here and do another split. Split this surface to here. And then next things I have to do is, and you'll notice that on this side over here, this split updated, is I need to mirror all of this data over and generate, go here, go to symmetry, generate my splits and such. So I'm going to pick that curve. My symmetry is going to be, let me hide show, Axis system. There's my ZX plane. Select OK. So now I'll just simply do my split. I want to split this surface to that curve and this curve. Select OK. Go ahead and hide these. Show. And then now, next thing I need to do is I need to split this. This is a uh, symmetry. Or I, I shouldn't say split. This is a symmetry. But what I want to do is instead of a symmetry on multi-section surface 2, I'm going to replace with this split. And it will update that side automatically for me. And then now, actually what I can do is I can come in here and just simply add this is part of that symmetry and it's going to come across. So here I have a nice transition that leads right into this tangency and fades off into nothing. You'll see these transitions all over the place in, in uh, styling where people are looking to create really nice shapes like a nice crisp edge that eventually flows off into nothing. So a lot of times the trick is understanding how do I make those transitions. If I go to a shading without edges, you can see really what's going on now, how this nice crisp edge goes off and blends into nothing.